We got news yesterday that they're going to turn off the water tomorrow and Thursday. So we have to prepare. Get water in buckets in the bathrooms, in the kitchens. So we have water to use Wednesday and Thursday. Try to keep your water use as frugal as you can. It's when we help one another like this that we can deal with difficulties as they come up. There's a lot that the Buddha says about the, the virtues of harmony, working together. It starts with the mind and the body. You're sitting here meditating. If the mind is one place, the body is something else. They don't help each other very much. When they're together, then they can help each other. The mind can look out after the body. The body can give the mind a good place to stay. It's like a house and its owner. If the owner is away most of the time, insects can come in, pests can come in, rot can form, pipes can burst, electric lines can short. All kinds of things that happen because nobody's looking after the house. And then when the owner comes back, he sees a big mess. He doesn't want to stay. It goes out again. It just makes the problem worse. But if you stay here and make sure the pipes are working, the electricity is working fine, any pests that come in, you take them out, then it's a good place to stay. And then you want to stay here more and more. So there will be some work in the beginning. This is what the work of directed thought and evaluation is all about. Trying to adjust the breath, trying to adjust the mind so that they fit together. And when you th see things are not going well in the body, then you fix them. If there's a blockage in your, your arm, say, or a blockage in your leg, where is the source of the blockage? Trace it out. Try to breathe all the way through the whole body. Get more sensitive to what's going on. That way you have a good place to stay. You're not left wandering around. And the, and the body gets looked after. So both sides, both sides benefit by staying together. And we can take this principle and use it in the, in the world outside as well. Learn how to work together instead of working at cross purposes. A lot can be accomplished. An image they like to use in Thailand is of thread. If we just have a few scattered threads here and there, they can do too much. But if you weave them into a cloth, the cloth can do all kinds of things for you. So we learn how to weave our actions together so we're here in harmony. So the fact that we're living with other people is not an obstacle to the practice, it's actually a help, a help to the practice, an aid. When you think of it that way, then living together becomes an important part of the practice. It gives you strength as you're giving strength to other people as well. We know that famous image of the acrobats where the one acrobat says, you know, look after me and I'll look after you and then we'll come down safely from the pole that we're, up, that we're doing our tricks on. And the other acrobat says, no, you have to look after each of us, has to look after him or herself. Well, that's half of the sutta. The other half is that by, there are times when looking after others you benefit. You develop good qualities in the mind. Endurance, patience, equanimity, goodwill. Kindness. You treat other people with these qualities, and you're going to benefit too. The way you use your mouth with other people is going to have, have an impact on the way you use your mouth with yourself. So try to use it well. Use your thoughts well. Use your actions well. So that everybody benefits.